Leading artists have two basic things in common, knowledge of painting theory and years of practice. Unfortunately, theory has been ignored, which has caused it difficult to find in training curriculums. Here is a brief bit of history to show you how that happened. We have a liftoff. Nice to be in orbit. Years ago, painting theory was presented much like a set of rules with step-by-step -step practices. Back in the 60s, when Jackson Pollock was popular, ideas and speculations shifted in the art world, forcing a change in art education. Also around that time, neuroscientists exposed evolutionary experiments and theories about the functions of the brain, and so did the perceptions and speculations of the general public. Our left and right sides of the brain became fashionable social topics. We soon believed the right hemisphere of the brain developed creative ideas, while the left side of the brain produced analytical reasoning. New inventive theories from the general public were formed. Educational institutions began to teach students accordingly. In art, analytical theories were dropped from art classes for the sake of producing unadulterated forms of self-expression. Decades later, we understand that this was not the case at all. After reinventing the wheel, we are realizing the mind uses both creative and analytical functions of the brain. In my upcoming video, you will see how the principles and theories of painting are practiced by top plein air artists and how this knowledge helps them portray their individuality by example. If you are looking for help, be sure to follow me and don't miss this amazing and informative video. Until then, keep painting.